Ja. Ja. Thank you so much, and thanks for uh, the invitation. It's always a lot of fun to come out here. So, so I'm going to tell you something about what I mean by complex deformations of an Azaf representations, and everything I'll tell you was a joint work with my colleague David Dumas at University of Illinois, Chicago. So a Azaf representation, let me just give a quick spiel before I write anything. A Azaf representations are some kind of generalization of co convex co-compact representations into higher rank Lie groups. So there's some special kind of discrete faithful representations of hyper hyperbolic groups into uh, higher rank Lie groups. And they were invented a number of years ago by, uh, by Francois Labouri. And sometime later, Anna Wienhard and Olivier Guichard found examples of compact manifolds with locally homogeneous geometric structures whose monodromies were given by these Anazov representations. Now, when these representations end up landing into complex Lie groups, oftentimes these uh, locally homogeneous geometric manifolds you get are quotients of domains in complex homogeneous spaces. So this gives rise to a bunch of new interesting uh, complex manifolds, and me and David set out to study these manifolds. Uh, and we proved a couple things about them. So let me just start with a kind of vague discussion. So if M is a compact complex manifold, okay. well, there are many questions you could ask, but let me focus in on, on three questions that are the questions I want to say something about. Okay, so maybe the first question you might ask is, can I somehow make M simpler? And what's a way to make a manifold simpler? Well, does it fiber over something simpler than itself? So does M uh, fiber holomorphically uh, over a compact Riemann surface? Riemann surface, and I'll say of, of genus at least one, since the question of the existence of meromorphic functions on M, which would be if X was CP1, while also important, has a, a somewhat different flavor. So two, uh, does M admit a Kähler metric? Kähler metric. So does M admit the kind of structure that allows us to use tools and techniques, say, from Hodge theory to, to understand something about it? M3, and this is a, a more kind of lofty goal, is uh, can we understand uh, the deformation theory of M as a complex manifold? And in my setting, M is going to be some complex manifold that comes from, that underlies some locally homogeneous geometric structure. And this question is really going to be about how do I compare the deformation theory of M as a complex manifold versus the deformation theory of M as a locally homogeneous geometric manifold. Okay, so, so what's the aim? Let me say it in words. So I'll assume I have some a discrete subgroup, and for me, uh, gamma will always be isomorphic to a surface group inside of some uh, complex, say, simple uh, Lie group, and some omega inside of G mod P, so this is some type of flag variety here, so P is some parabolic subgroup. So if G is SLNC and P is upper triangular matrices, this is CPN minus one. Uh, so I'm looking at things like that. And uh, I have a gamma action on omega that's free and properly discontinuous. So this is a domain of discontinuity for gamma. So my aim is that in this setup, I have a manifold M that's given uh, by the quotient here, I should say co-compact domain of discontinuity. And I want to uh, answer 
one, two, and three. Uh, two and three in some sense uh, for such examples. Okay, so if you were happy to uh, believe that such examples existed, I really wouldn't need to have an Ozoff representations in the title, but this project is really motivated from trying to kind of, we know so many things about convex co-compact surface group rep representations into SL2C, so these are also known as quasi-fuchsian representations, and we have things like the simultaneous uniformization theorem, which tells us a lot about the set of all uh, quasi-fuchsian representations, and this comes from understanding kind of compact manifolds that have these represent, uh, compact locally homogeneous manifolds, namely complex projective surfaces, that have these monodromies. And so this is, the, the aim of this is to kind of look at components of complex Anozov representations, which I'll define shortly, and to try to understand if something like that might be true. So the things we're proving are kind of purely complex analytic and just take these as hypotheses, but these Anozov representations, one, they generate examples of these things, which I'll tell you about right now, but two, the whole goal is to kind of see if this theory looks at all like the theory of convex co-compact surface group representations into SL2C, okay? So I just call the next section uh, Anozov, so I will give you the definition vaguely, uh, but it kind of in parentheses, I'll just say generating examples. So, I don't know if there's anyone in the room that will be like this, but if for some reason you like complex geometry but don't like discrete groups, you can uh, take the quotes away from generating examples and kind of think that this section isn't so important. If you like discrete groups much more than complex manifolds, then maybe pay more attention. <laughs> okay, so what is an Anozov representation? So, uh, G, a semi-simple uh, Lie group, real or complex, just for the definition here, to think of something like SLNR, or the symplectic group, or the orthogonal group, uh, over C, that is. Uh, and P plus P minus uh, a pair of opposite uh, parabolic subgroups. So I don't want to do this thing where I spend my whole time talking about Lie theory, so I won't tell you what a parabolic subgroup or what opposite means. I'll just give you an example. If G is SLNC, say, an example of a P is given by the upper triangular matrices, say P plus. An example of a P minus is given by uh, lower triangular matrices. And the fact that they're opposite tell is the fact that P plus intersect P minus, uh, which I'll call L, is... Uh, is is reductive, so uh, if you don't like these words, then just kind of take this as your core example. I mean, the precise definition here is that the intersection of these two needs to be the common Levy factor of these two parabolics, but like I said, totally happy if for the rest of the talk you just think about SLNC, the so-called Borel subgroup of upper triangular matrices and its opposite subgroup of lower triangular matrices, okay? And sigma, a closed oriented uh, surface, of genus G, uh, at least one. So what is an Anozov representation, well, definition? A representation of the fundamental group of sigma into G is P plus P minus Anozov. I should make a statement, actually. So I'm going to say something about homogeneous spaces for G by these groups. So in this example, G mod P plus is complete flags in Cn. And in fact, G mod P minus in this case is also complete flags in Cn, okay? And G mod parabolic subgroups will, for S, L, and C will always be partial flag varieties and for other groups will be sometimes interpretable as some kind of flag varieties and for general groups, I mean, you just have to kind of live with the algebra. So rho is P plus P minus a Nozov uh, if there exists a pair of equivariant ooh, uh, continuous maps C plus minus, which go from 
the boundary and infinity of the group, for me, I don't care if you break the symmetry here and just think of this like the circle. That's fine. Topologically, that's what it is. And this definition is really only a topological definition, although you should really remember some kind of holder structure here if you want to be technical. Uh, so a pair of equivariant continuous maps from the boundary and infinity of the group into either g, p plus, or minus. So in this example, that would be like a, for each point on the circle, a choice of complete flag in here. Uh, and this map needs to satisfy some hypotheses. So one is that uh, C plus this pair, C minus, uh, are uh, compatible. So compatible in this case means that if you pick two different points, then the flags are kind of maximally transverse to one another. All the complementary summands are in direct sum. In general, this compatibility condition means the following. G acts on P plus times P minus uh, and has, diagonally, and has a unique open orbit. Open orbit. And this compatibility condition means for all T not equal to T prime in the boundary infinity of the group, uh, C plus of T comma C minus of T prime uh, is inside of the unique open G orbit. So just to get things down to earth, if this is SL2C, then both of these quotients are CP1. The group acts diagonally on CP1 cross CP1, and it acts transitively on the complement of the diagonal, which is the unique open orbit. And this condition just says the maps are injective. Okay. <coughs> So it's some kind of very strong type of injectivity. And there's one more condition, which I, I just want to tell you that it's there, but not say anything about it. Uh, and I'll just loosely call it uh, dynamics preserving. Pro preserving. So we know this is a hyperbolic group. So the action of the group on its boundary has these north-south dynamics. And this should somehow be reflected uh, with respect to these maps. I don't want to say anything more about this. But let me just remark that one of the quite nice things that Anna and Olivier prove is that uh, if, say, G is an algebraic group and rho is the Zariski dense, Or if it's not an algebraic group, you can just say not contained in any proper Lie subgroup. If rho, rho is risky dense, then uh, uh, one, then other stuff implies two. So this kind of technical condition here that I don't want to write down is not important if you have a Zariski dense representation. So if I have any representation, I can look at its Zariski closure, and then if it satisfies these first two up to here, then it's a Nozoff into its Zariski closure. And to understand if the original representation is a Nozoff is a question of understanding when I take a representation that's a Nozoff and compose with a Lie group homomorphism if I get something that's still a Nozoff. And this is complicated, but boils down to algebra, which is a big part of what uh, Anna and Olivier do in their, their paper. So I'm, I want to be you know, honest and write down the definition, but why do we care? So properties, so this definition was invented to show that certain representations of the fundamental group of a surface into, say, SLNR that had been found by Nigel Hitchin using techniques from Higgs bundles in the 90s had nice geometric properties. And so properties, if I have an Anozov representation, well, one, and this is kind of everything else falls out of this, is that uh, rho is a quasi-asymmetric embedding. And so from this, it immediately follows that uh, rho is discrete and faithful. Well, would only follow that the kernel is finite, but of course there's no finite order elements in the fundamental group of a surface. No, 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 no. Um, uh, and three. Maybe I'll just add one more thing. Uh, the, uh, if I take gamma and pi 1 of sigma, 
then uh, rho of gamma is conjugate into uh, this group L. So if I have something, say, a Nozoff in here for these two things, then every element is diagonalizable, is what that says. Okay, and four, and perhaps kind of, I mean, these are properties that if you don't have and you're a geometric topologist, maybe you want to stop, but four is even more important for some of the things you do, which is uh, a Nozoff is an open property in the representation variety. Open in HOM, pi 1 sigma to G. And unfortunately, outside of the world of uh, convex co-compact, uh, one and two are not enough to ensure you have an open condition. So there are discrete, faithful, quasi-isometric embeddings of free groups into SL3R that you can perturb as a tiny amount and get something that's not discrete and faithful anymore. The examples due to uh, Olivier Guichard. So a Nozoff is, it's, it's really unknown what the distance is between things that are discrete and faithful, and, well, things that are quasi-isometric embeddings and things that are a Nozoff, but there's some distance between them. Okay? So uh, uh, how is this related in the uh, you know, SL3C case to being uh, uh, on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one implies the other, or? Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's the last thing I want to say. Uh, remark is that uh, if G is rank one, one, then rho Anazov, if and only if, rho is convex go convex. And in that case, we all know what these, well, people who know what convex go compact are, these are just the, this is just the limit set here. In rank one, there's only one parabolic group. This is going into the boundary of that rank one symmetric space, so. Okay. Okay, so let me state the, the theorem of Guichard and Wienhard that generates uh, these examples for me that I want to talk about. Okay, so theorem uh, 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 Guichard. Okay. So let rho from pi 1 sigma into G be a Nozoff. I'll suppress that it's a Nozoff with respect to some parabolics. For me, a Nozoff is just some way to know I have discrete and faithful representations that I can perturb and still get something discrete and faithful. So I recommend you think about them that way as too for the purpose of this talk. So let rho be a Nozoff. Uh, then there exists uh, a compact manifold, M, okay, and uh, locally homogeneous, homogeneous uh, geometric structure, oh, I guess I have to put in here, I'll say, G, and I'll call it N, uh, GN structure. So what does this mean? This means that on this manifold, I have an atlas of charts. The charts land in N, where N is some homogeneous space for G. So N is G mod H for some closed subgroup H. So I have charts into N whose transition functions are restrictions of elements of G. Okay, so that's what locally homogeneous geometric structure means. So then there exists a compact manifold M and a locally homogeneous geometric structure on M uh, such that uh, the monodromy or holonomy representation of this geometric structure, uh, structure is uh, rho. Ooh, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so, so if rho is a Nozoff representation into PSL2R. These are, these are given by hyperbolic structures, say, on a surface. Uh, if rho is into PSL2C and it's quasi fuchsian these are given by complex projective structures on the surface. What's the relationship between sigma and n? Sigma and n? M. M? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. So, I should say uh, pi 1 of m uh, is equal to sigma. 
There, there, uh, pi, one of, pi one of m is equal to pi one of sigma. I, so I will admit that this is often the case. It's a little bit of a lie. There's some extension issues sometimes. Well, let me, let me show you how the construction goes, and I'll mention what it's obvious what could make this not quite true. So, so the, what they do, as I said I was going to study, so they find uh, omega inside of some n, okay, which is this n here, so some g mod, some g mod h, uh, on which gamma, which is the image of rho, acts uh, properly, freely, uh, and co-compactly. OK, so this isn't true on the nose if this guy isn't simply connected, but it's usually the case that he is. OK, uh, so if, if G uh, is complex, then uh, it's, I'll say it's often, and it probably even be true to say usually, then it's often the case that uh, I can take n equal to g mod say, q, where q is some parabolic subgroup that may be very, it may be unrelated from uh, the p plus and p minus that appear in the definition of a Nozoff. So this thing is a so-called generalized flag variety. So remember in my example where g was SLNC and this q was the Borel subgroup of upper triangular matrices, then this is complete flags inside of Cn. In general, this is something like that. And so, uh, so then I get, uh, yeah, so please. Coming back on the, uh, yeah. the definition. Yes. So in rank one case, you know, what are these maps, uh, you know, plus minus, I mean, what's the distinction about? It's the limit set. Uh, but uh, the limit set where? In, uh, in the boundary of the symmetric space. Uh, but why do you have two of them? That's what ah, because it, when there's only, if there's only one parabolic here, so it turns out that if these maps exist, then they're unique. And there's only one parabolic inside of, uh, inside of a rank one symmetric space. So this is the same space. The spaces are homeomorphic, and the maps are the same. Oh, I see. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and in fact, the p plus, so p plus determines uh, p minus. So but, but you do need maps in, into both of them. So, so really, the data of a pair of opposite parabolics is the data of one parabolic. But you, in general, you need maps into both of them. Uh, oh, ooh, wait. So, so now what I'm going to do, we're going to look at these quotients, m equals omega uh, mod gamma, which is a compact complex manifold in this case with a locally homogeneous uh, geometric structure where the, the, the model manifold is a flag variety. And uh, try to understand their complex geometry. Geometry, okay? So with that being said, I better tell you what I, what I mean by understand uh, their complex geometry. So um, let me say something about, about complex geometry. So, uh, so I've given this talk a few times and the last time I gave this talk, I gave an example of such a thing, which I'd really love to do, but then I really ran out of time. So I'm making an executive decision to, to not do that so I don't have to super rush at the end. But I encourage you, if you want to see a, a nice example of one of these, I'll be here all day today and tomorrow as well. I'd be happy to, to talk about these things. They're very, very kind of interesting things where you start with some flag variety and then you use this, this map plus some incidence relation to remove a bunch of stuff and they're very kind of intricate topological objects even. And part of this project I won't talk about is David and I have computed the, the, uh, uh, the additive structure on the cohomology rings for a lot of uh, these guys and the it, cohomology is very interesting and, and even the domains omega are very highly connected. They're not contractible and so it's very interesting and beautiful picture, but I, I'm, I've decided I'm not going to go there today. So let's go to, uh, to section three, and let me 
give you the requisite facts from complex geometry so that when I state theorems, they'll at least in theory make sense. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I kind of want to introduce all the kind of deformation theoretic players when you're studying manifolds that are both complex manifolds and locally homogeneous manifolds, okay? So again, a kind of flourish of notation, or flurry if it, as it were. Okay, so the setup for this discussion, I'll just take G to be uh, some complex uh, Lie group very soon to be some simple, complex simple Lie group and uh, H, a complex subgroup. Uh, and again, I'll just use this notation, N for the homogeneous space, which is a complex manifold with a holomorphic left G action. Okay, so I'm gonna suppose I'm handed M, uh, a compact oriented, uh, GN manifold, so this is a compact oriented manifold equipped with a locally homogeneous GN structure, an atlas of charts into N whose changes and functions are given by G, and I'll use the notation M underline, so this is the smooth manifold uh, underlying M. Underlying M, okay, so M has a GN structure, M underline is the smooth manifold with that structure. Okay, so let me introduce three spaces. So the first space, I'll write this way. So this is the deformation space, or moduli space if you like, of marked uh, GN structures on M, on M. So this is non-empty because he's got he's in here, so so I take a, a GN structure on M. I take a different one. They're the same if there's a G map between them that's isotopic to the identity. All right. So this is a lot like for those of you who are familiar with hyperbolic geometry. This is like the space of uh, uh, hyperbolic structures, say, on on a surface. Okay. So. Uh, even more suggestively, uh, chi pi 1 of m g, so this is the character variety of, and being loose here, uh, conjugacy classes of representations, uh, rho from pi 1 of m into g. Ooh, sorry about that. Okay, and finally, I want to study complex geometry, so I should have some, some space that records the different complex structures that can go on M. So I'll continue to call it Teichmuller space. So this is the space of marked complex structures. Marked complex structures on M. So here I have two different complex structures on M, and they're the same if there's a biholomorphism between them that's isotopic to the identity. Okay. Okay. So now, to answer these questions, let me. So these spaces are all related to one another. Ooh, great. These spaces are all related to one another. So I have here D, G, N, M underline. Okay. And when I have a locally homogeneous geometric structure, if I take a loop in M and I analytically continue the coordinate charts around M and record the elements of G that trade me from coordinate chart to coordinate chart, I get this holonomy representation that I mentioned before, and that gives me a map down to this gate, this uh, character variety down here. Uh, and so I sounded, sounded like I just gave you a representation, now I'm giving you a conjugacy class, but the equivalence relations here are cooked up so that two things are equivalent here if the representations down here become conjugate. Furthermore, there's a map here to the Teichmuller space of this manifold that says, all right, I'm a locally homogeneous GN manifold, but N's a complex manifold. 
So my transition functions are given by restrictions of elements of G, but G is acting by biholomorphisms, okay? So in particular, I'm a complex manifold, okay? So for instance, if I want to compare the deformation theory of M as a geometric manifold and M as a complex manifold, it's asking what the nature of this map is right here, okay? Uh, okay, good. So let me give a little theorem. So this is usually called the Erisman Thurston uh, theorem. Uh, although I should actually include maybe uh, Earl uh, Hedgehog and maybe others, uh, is that this holonomy map here, so where it makes sense, and by this I mean maybe, uh, so I'm going to use the word local biholomorphism, and so that's what primes where it makes sense. So where it makes sense, Hall uh, is a local uh, by holomorphism. So, properly understood, the Erisman Thurston theorem, I don't have to say where it makes sense, and I say Hall is a local homeomorphism. But now, this space here, G is a complex group, and so in fact, this thing here inherits the structure of an affine algebraic variety, and there's also a natural complex structure up here, and in fact, this map is a, a local by holomorphism of them. Okay, so, so maybe I'll say something about a, a special case. So say M is a surface and G is PSL2C. So maybe I'm looking at the deformation space of complex projective structures up here. So PSL2C acting on CP1. Down here I have the, the character variety for PSL2C. And the fact that this is a local biholomorphism is due to uh, Hedgehog and, and maybe Earl as well. Uh, then there's this map down to Teichmuller space from complex projective structures, which we know is surjective but not injective, and has this big fiber given by holomorphic quadratic differentials parametrizing the fiber using the Schwarzian derivative. So if those words mean anything to you, that's the kind of context we're in. And if we don't, then bear with me. Okay. So I want to study what that situation is like when I leave the world of complex projective structures on surfaces and I start to look at these higher dimensional complex manifolds. So, so let's call this map pi. And my goal is to say something about pi, but here I need to say something about what the structure of this thing is. So let me record the kind of fundamental theorem of uh, deformation theory, if you like. So. Uh, so let uh, theta m be the sheaf of a uh, holomorphic tangent vector fields on uh, m, where here I'm thinking of m as a, a complex manifold, uh, then if uh, the following two sheaf cohomologies, the sheaf cohomology of M with coefficients in these holomorphic vector fields vanishes for I equals zero and two, then near M, uh, the Teichmuller space of M is a complex manifold of dimension uh, equal to the, di the dimension of H1 M theta M. So for those of you versed in, in Teichmuller theory of surfaces, H0 vanishing says there's no holomorphic vector fields on a surface, no global sections. Uh, H2 vanishing because there's no 0, 2 forms on a Riemann surface. And H1 with values in theta M, well that's dual to H0, this thing inverse squared, which is holomorphic quadratic differentials, and we know that's dimension, and that's the dimension of the Teichmuller space. So, okay. so this is some generalization of that, coming from work in the 50s and 60s by Kodaira and Spencer. Okay. So, so now I'm, I'm almost able to state my theorem, and then I'll be able to say something about the proof. 
Um, but, but before I go on, maybe let me just give the remark about why we're doing this, OK? So when G is equal to PSL2C, then uh, Anozov representations from pi 1 sigma into PSL2C, OK, these are the same things as uh, qua so-called quasi fuchsian representations. It's the same thing as convex co-compact representations. OK, so the picture for these is the following. The image of these, these C uh, maps from the circle is some Jordan curve. That's some crazy fractal picture, which I think I've drawn every time I've given a talk here. Uh, OK, it looks like this. And so there's a so-called sigma plus, uh, omega plus and omega minus. The action of the, the image group here is very chaotic on this, this set lambda here, which is the limit set. It's free and properly discontinuous on the complement. And the quotient of the complement gives me a pair of uh, Riemann surfaces, but even more a pair of complex projective surfaces. But this pair, it turns out that this pair of Riemann surfaces uh, ends up parametrizing the set of all quasi fuchsian representations. Okay, so this is a so called simultaneous uniformization theorem. theorem. So the goal of this deformation theory stuff is to answer the question. Uh, so if, uh, if A, say, in the character variety for pi 1 sigma G in G some complex group is a component, half component of a Nozoff reps, uh, is there uh, a compact manifold M uh, such that uh, this component of Van Ozoff representations is biholomorphic to the Teichmuller space of Mark complex structures on this manifold M? Okay? So this is what I see as one way to approach some kind of generalization of simultaneous uniformization. I mean, it truly is the statement over here. I take my compact manifold to be the disjoint union of a surface with a surface with the opposite orientation. And the statement is that to every Anozov representation, I get a unique such thing. And to every pair of things, I get a unique Anozov representation. OK? So th this is what's mainly motivating this question. That being said, and I think it's also a very interesting study just from the direction of, of complex geometry, but that depends Does on. Does it have a happen except in that situation? Well, I'm going to state a theorem, but it's, it, the answer is not yes nor no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you'll see the statement of the theorem and you can decide uh, how you feel about it. Okay, so, uh, so the theorem. But the theorem kind of has a long prologue, so let's set stuff up. Okay, so G, uh, complex simple group. Maybe technically I might want to say of adjoint type, although for most things this won't matter. Uh, so this is groups like SLNC, SONC, uh, SP, 2NC, and some exceptional groups. And that's the complete list. Uh, so P is some parabolic subgroup. So that uh, G mod P, which remember this is what we were calling a flag variety. And you can take as a definition of parabolic here that this is a, uh, a, a smooth projective variety over complex numbers. So it has a holomorphic embedding into some big projective space. Uh, so now, um, let's assume we have some surface group representation into G. And a Nozoff would be an example of such a thing, but let me just say what its properties are. So uh, uh, yeah, we'll just say discrete and faithful. Uh, uh, yeah, discrete and faithful. 
Uh, and I want some cohomological property that it's, it's irreducible. So uh, by that, I'll say that uh, these cohomology groups with coefficients in the Lie algebra of G, which is given a module structure by the adjoint representation, that these vanish for i equals 0 and 2. Okay, so we're almost to the statement of the theorem. Okay, so now what, are, what kind of manifolds are we going to look at? So let uh, gamma be the image of rho and uh, omega inside of uh, G mod P, uh, co-compact, co-compact domain of discontinuity. Continuity. So we know if this is actually an Anozov representation, uh, and in a lot of cases, I'll say, not all cases, but in a lot of cases, if I have an Anozov representation like this, I will get something like this by this theorem of Olivier and Navinhard that I mentioned. P and P? Yeah. Uh, yes, those P's match. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, and give this a name. M is equal to omega mod gamma. Uh, oh, and I guess, so there's a little technical hypothesis, so I don't need some other technical hypotheses, is that I want to assume that uh, the fundamental group of of omega is trivial, which is true in, in many, many cases. There, in fact, I think there's probably only finitely many cases where this ends up not being true under these circumstances. Um, and lastly, I need some, and this is where the, the not yes nor no comes in, I need some size condition on the complement of omega for the things I'm going to say. So if lambda is g mod p minus omega, so this would be like the limit set if I was looking at a Fuchsian group. I actually need to control the Hausdorff dimension of this thing to say something. So, uh, so, I'm get, so I just pick any Ramanian metric here that gives me a, a well-defined notion of Hausdorff dimension. Okay, and uh, I'll say that this is some number alpha. Okay, and the dimension of G mod let's say is equal to n, okay, then, and maybe I'll put it over here, finally we get a then, I want to give you some kind of answer to those three questions I wrote on the board at the beginning. So one, uh, if alpha is less than twice n minus one, then uh, there is no holomorphic map from M uh, to X for X, uh, any compact Riemann surface of a uh, genus uh, bigger than zero, okay? So I mean, you, you know, a lot of people's dreams was that these, these manifolds should be fiber bundles over a surface, and sometimes topologically they are such things, but this is not so strong a condition. So it, it, I mean, my expectation is that it's, this condition is probably not even necessary for this. Right? So you can never expect to make this fiber bundle happen in, a, in the holomorphic category. Two, uh, same condition implies that uh, M is not Kähler. In particular, under this condition, in particular, it can't be algebraic. Okay. It can't be a projective variety. And that's because if you're projective variety, you're a sub closed subset of CPN, and the restriction of the Fubini Studi metric on CPN gives you a Kähler metric. And so, unlike complex dimension one, where Riemann surfaces are our favorite algebraic things, that is not the way this theory is going to go. Okay. And three, so here there's a slightly bigger condition on the Hausdorff dimension of this, this kind of bad set here. So if I look at the derivative at m of this map pi I had up before, 
So this goes from the tangent space of this deformation space of GX structures on M into the tangent space at M of the Teichmuller space. Okay. Then uh, d pi m is injective uh, and an iso uh, if, uh, if the infinitesimal biholomorphism group of this flag variety uh, is equal to the Lie algebra of G. So this condition here is, is true except in three exceptional cases, except three exceptional cases. So it's totally not like complex projective structures, where the map down to Teichmuller space has a big fiber. Generically here, knowing the locally homogeneous geometric structure is the same as knowing the complex structure. Okay? Under this, of course, additional condition here, so let me make one more mark and then I'll quickly say something about the proof in the last couple minutes. So remark uh, is that, uh, well, so one remark is that uh, these conditions are met, uh, are met say, for many uh, a Nazoff representations, reps. For example, if rho is a Fuchsian representation, and this includes into, some, into say, SLNC, uh, and I get some domain of discontinuity in uh, just there's just as an example to know what the bounds here are say in the uh, 1 n minus 1 flags on Cn, then 1 uh, and 2 are true uh, once n is equal to 3, and 3 is true uh, once n is equal to uh, 5. And then as n gets bigger and bigger, kind of these conditions get easier and easier to satisfy. So the looming question is, how big can the image of the limit curve of an Anazov representation be? How big can the Hausdorff dimension of the limit set of a convex co-compact surface group be? And I don't think anyone has any idea about the answer to this question. I think it's a very, very hard question in general. But using these techniques, whether or not this could be a yes to the question I asked depends on, on that. So, um, so. In the last couple minutes here, let me say something. So the, the first two of these facts are actually pretty the first two of these are, are pretty trivial to prove once you figure out what to do. So let's say I had a holomorphic map from M to some Riemann surface. So sitting over M is this domain omega, and so there's some F here. Of course, sitting over the Riemann surface is uh, its universal cover, which since the genus is greater than zero, is either biholomorphic to C or the disk. Okay? So I have a lift of this map F to a holomorphic map here. So that Hausdorff, so this Hausdorff dimension condition, H dim of lambda uh, less than 2n minus 1, implies by a theorem of Schiffman, which extends the Hartog's extension lemma, that uh, F twiddle uh, extends to G mod P into X twiddle. And this is a compact complex manifold. It has no non-constant holomorphic functions. So this implies that under these conditions, you can't have a non-constant non holomorphic map like this, because it would lead to a non-constant holomorphic function on this flag variety. Uh, ooh, that would be really bad. Is it, does it fill up the whole board? Maybe I'll go over here. Okay, so two uh, is, a, is implied by one, actually. So there's a theorem of Beauville and Sue where they prove that if you have a compact Kähler manifold and it surjects a surface group, then in fact there's a non-constant holomorphic map from that Kähler manifold to a Riemann surface, a positive genus even genus bigger than one. And 
here I'm dealing with uh, the fundamental group of my, uh, my guy being a, a surface group. Okay? So that implies, obviously, that it surjects uh, a surface group. So if it were Kähler, it would have a non-constant holomorphic map to a Riemann surface, but it doesn't. And I know the bell just rang, but let me just say one final thing. So for three, the key thing you do is uh, there's a spectral sequence whose E2 page looks like the following thing, uh, HQ omega theta m, which converges down to the P plus Q cohomology of m with values in the tangent sheaf. So you really want to compute the cohomology of this tangent sheaf. There's a spectral sequence like this. Up here, I have group cohomology acting on the cohomology of the universal cover by deck transformations with coefficients in, oh, this should be an omega here. And the, the Hausdorff dimension condition says that, in fact, in the, in the right range, this is the same thing as the qth cohomology of g mod p with coefficients in the tangent sheaf of g mod p. And this is computed to be 0 if q is bigger than 1. And if q is 0, it's the infinitesimal automorphism group. And under those circumstances, this thing ends up collapsing at the E2 page. And you explicitly compute this and see that it's 0 unless p plus q is equal to 1. And when it's 1, it's the group cohomology with coefficients in H0 here, which is the infinitesimal automorphisms of the homogeneous space, which is the Lie algebra of G usually. And you get the isomorphism between this and the tangent space of the character variety, which is that H1 with coefficients in the Lie algebra. So that's a very fast, rough sketch. And I better stop there since I've used all my time. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, SP2NC is an exception. And why is this? Because it's, it has a homogeneous space as CPN, which is also homogeneous for SL2N. Uh, uh, then there's, there's one G2 example, which don't let me say anything about it. And then there's an S, uh, SO. Uh, 2n plus 1c is an exception for a very particular choice of parabolic. What's that? I actually don't. I actually don't remember.